Nala. She attacked she Titan. Kyoji. How does it feel, Eren, fighting your brother? Yeah, very timely zoom in on Historia's face as they talk about touching royalty. What will you do to Historia, I wonder, in the future? Armin, Armin's knowing look. And this was the biggest drop, I think, this episode. The fact that this comes from Eren, this whole thing. <laughs> so how did Grisha feel later on when he like met Mikasa and Armin? Did he figure it out? Here we go, the finale of one of the craziest seasons in media history. You know, I think at one point I said that they wouldn't dare kill Reiner and let Bertholdt live with that, but in fact they did the opposite. He's definitely not going to take that well. He's already not in the best mental condition, as we all know. It's not my favorite opening, but it's grown on me over time. The other side of the wall, imagine. Which wall, though? Right, it's more of the same. I'm so grateful for characters like, like Pixis. He's another one in that list of people who actually... You know, they have something higher. They don't just fall into the same traps again and again. Good. Historia can go on the list too. The truth will set you free, if there is such a thing. Right. One thing I missed in the last couple episodes is that only the descendants of Ymir can become titans, which means everybody we see who's a titan is a descendant of Ymir, including, like, Reiner, Berthold. This is going to shock the penal colony. <laughs> Very realistic. It'll all come down to the individual person, right? I admire them for spreading the truth. It's a big move. Exactly, exactly. At least they're trying to improve things gradually. Yeah, they're putting themselves in jeopardy by doing this as well. I mean, who knows what'll happen. <laughs> I mean, they did get a hero's welcome, right? It's just that their mood did not allow them to enjoy it with all the things they had learned. There it is again. This theme of repeating. Oh no, does she, does she know? He definitely was. And his last thoughts were of Hitch, too. Marlo definitely lived up to his own, his own ideals. He didn't accomplish what he wanted to accomplish, but he was an amazing person. You're not fooling anyone right now. A lot of focus on the truth this episode. I kind of love it. Especially in contrast to some of the previous episodes where they're talking about how, like, there's no truth. It just depends on what side you're on. <laughs> Speaking of telling the truth. Alright, <laughs> but let it go. Because there's nothing you can do now. Don't you know that Armin is the best? But have you heard about how great Armin is? <laughs> Armin's the best. He knows so many things. He knows all about the sea. He knows every plot detail just before it happens. Sure, he may have berries and cream boy hair, but he'll do great. And this is sort of not the point, right? Like, what do you have to gain from being this hard on him? It's over. All of us wish Erwin had been chosen. <laughs> no, just me? Okay. Anyway, he's been kind of a jerk here, but I respect that at least he's putting it out in the open. There's something to be said for that. I think it hurts worse when you suspect people think a certain thing, but nobody will be forthcoming about that thought. It's one of those situations where the anticipation of pain is worse than the pain. So that's Armin's challenge. So be it. He'll overcome it. That's a massive oversimplification. It was way more than just their emotions. It's the opposite for Levi. I mean, he had to let go of someone important to bring back Armin. <laughs> wow. Calling him out. That's right. There are more important things. Leave it to these two to be the, the most mature. 
これから補充する調査兵団には本当のことを言えよ俺みてえな腰抜けが間違って入ってこねえようになそんな雑魚にだってな寝踏みする権利くらいはあるだろう Did you not get the same Erwin speech we got? I mean, he's not totally wrong. You know, also to his credit, to his sympathy, this doesn't really feel like he means all of this sincerely or his motivations are purely the information that he's saying. He's freaking out. Like, he's the only survivor of that attack on the Beast Titan. He's at a funeral. He probably has a ton of guilt about why he's the only one still there. He can't process the way things went because there's nothing really to process. It's just so chaotic and crazy and vile. And what they got for all this was a greater threat that's bigger than they ever imagined. So it's reasonable for him to be terrified. So that, I think, is the place from which this kind of intensity comes from, this emotional intensity, this blame, the fact that he's picking a fight. But then underneath it, there are some things that actually are true. Like Irwin was a major loss. The truth is important. Like people do have the right to decide. In fact, I think that's one of the biggest distinguishing factors for me in deciding or evaluating Irwin's character is that it seemed like he always was upfront about that and they did make their own decisions. And as long as people are making their own decisions, you have to respect their agency and not see them as like mechanical beings who are being controlled by others. As long as they have the right information, they make their own choices. So he's not wrong about that. He's not wrong that Armin has big shoes to fill in a sense. The mistake he's making is not realizing that basically everyone's on the same page as him already and that these are his comrades so his fear and anger is, is displaced it shouldn't be directed at them or at armin that's what makes the fact that john john and connie step in somewhat insightful they're more big picture in this they're not quibbling <laughs> in a way <laughs> depends on how you look at it tell him about the sea armin <laughs> Told you, just tell him about the sea. I don't know if you're gonna find freedom out there. You're gonna find the same things everywhere. Did Eren's vision of the future just take a massive hit right there with that realization? Boy, these medals medals feel somewhat hollow in light of the cost, but at least they, they get recognized. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, interesting that he sees it as a cycle. Wants to break the cycle, but also may be responsible for the cycle. I feel like maybe you should tell someone. The contact. They don't want it. Which is a threat to them. It does change the tone of this somewhat. To know that he made this appeal to them. <laughs> nice poker face. Very subtle. I feel like this is leading into one of those, like, road to hell being paved with the best intentions kind of thing. Aaron is silently taking responsibility for a lot of this, thinking that there's something he has to do, but... He's not really the best judge of what to do, typically. And he has so much power, turns out. He has the power of, like, all the titans. And he may very well be, like, the evil of the earth, or whatever they called it. You know, no big deal. Just just the evil of earth. The devil of earth. That's all. And it's been hinted at so strongly by so many characters, like, you know, the, the warriors, about how Eren is the worst possible person to have this. I feel like his intentions are, are good. I don't doubt that. I think... At this point, he's been through enough, and he has enough good things to care about that he, he wants the best. Like, his concern for Historia feels genuine here. His concern for Armin is genuine. Honestly, it just feels like he's not equipped. You know, he's not equipped for the role. Especially since we've seen from the beginning, he's always had sort of a, a violent and hateful and non-nuanced binary thinking streak, which are maybe not the best qualities for someone looking to shape the, the world. Is there no other option than flaunting the very power we possess, the power of titans that makes the world believe we are devils? Is it delusional to think we could all sit around the same table and talk? I want to think it possible even if it seems like an idealistic view. I believe coming up with a better way is my duty, and so I must never turn away from thinking about it. Who is, who is speaking, I wonder? Whose voice is this in? <laughs> So some time passing here. That's true. I wasn't really thinking about that. But that, it was a huge victory in terms of their reclaiming land, growing crops. So it wasn't just pain and tragedy. It was a win for this country. Wow. What's their target, I wonder? The outside perimeter? Maybe the sea? Look at his hair. <laughs> the birds! The real enemies 
動けないのかあの体で少しずつ張って壁まで進もうとしたんでしょう Moving very slowly. Please don't stand up. I don't need another Rod Rice Titan. Wow, imagine Aaron having sympathy and compassion for the Titans. How far we've come. Doesn't really seem to be endangering anyone, given that it moves at one centimeter per month. The desert. Getting close. Wow. Aaron's going to get to see the sea this episode. I don't know how to feel about that. It's going to probably be a combination of amazing and disappointing. The Scouts Beach Vacation. I can't help but enjoy this. Looking pretty nice. <laughs> Very blue. Does not disappoint visually. And the world is round. Aaron seems the the least moved. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's nice. It's a nice moment. Was that her attempt at a smile? <laughs> Can never sell all the salt. It's too much salt. Too much. He lost something. だ。何もかも。親父の記憶で見たものと同じなんだ。向こうにいる敵。全部殺せば。なあ、なあ、なあ。俺たち。なあ、なあ、なあ。This <laughs> All goes back to the origin, the source, which is Aaron Yeager. At least Armin got a souvenir. It's sad, but very Attack on Titan. <laughs> to get all the way there and, you know, just have more, more hurdles, more obstacles. A couple episodes back, I made a joke in the description of one of the videos where I took Iroh's quote, in the darkest times, hope is something you give yourself, and said something like, in the darkest times, freedom is something you give yourself. I feel like that's that's the lesson Aaron needs. It's not gonna be the borders. It wasn't really the sea. It's sort of like, he's going to be as free as, as he makes it, as he makes himself, you know? As long as his freedom is contingent on some external reality, he's never going to be free. I feel like a big part of what's happening is that Aaron doesn't know what to do. Like, he doesn't know who to be if he's not like, fighting for something, fighting for some vision of freedom. So he got what he always wanted, but he's got to kick the can down the road. Now it's got to be about destroying a whole whole nation or world of people. And I think Armin and Mikasa are looking at him like, dude, when is it enough? You know, can you not just enjoy this moment, please? I don't know quite what to make of it, but I feel like Eren had already sort of lost the vision of the sea, even before this whole expedition. Like the night before, Armin was trying to get him psyched up and Eren's like, yeah, the sea, whatever. And Armin had this sort of knowing look like, oh no, something's gone. Something's gone from Eren. And that was before this whole revelation. Now it's only gotten worse. And it feels like Eren is retreating into himself. He's doing that thing again that he sort of wavered back and forth on about being like the chosen one, being the special one. In this case, it seems like he, he feels he has to solve the problems of the entire world, but he's not equipped to do that. It's almost like a supernatural force pushing Eren on. He's just, he's unstoppable. And I think Mikasa alluded to that in her OVA, in her fantasy OVA, where she just accepted that she she can't keep up with him. She never will, and that there's something inevitable about his about his destiny that's destructive. The way she put it is that Eren will die, and that might be literally what happens, but it also could be like a tragic end for him or the show. Anyway, it's a cool scene. It's bittersweet because we've been hearing so much about the ocean for so long. Here it is. And to me, it feels good, but Eren can't enjoy it. And I think that it's because of what he's focused on. And he's not entirely wrong. Like he's focused on the threat. The threat still exists. So you can't fully enjoy it. You can't fully enjoy this moment, especially if you're this crew and you care about Eren. So very interesting ending to a pretty incredible season. Season three as a whole feels bigger than the entire show before it. I think it starts out a little bit weird. There's a little bit of clunkiness to it early on. Although in hindsight, I'm kind of glad we got some of the government plot stuff out of the way so we can get to the real meat. The real meat being like the expedition, obviously. My favorite episode of which being Irwin's Charge because I feel it gave the, the first maybe definitely the best counterpoint to this depressing bleak world we've gotten so far. I've been waiting and waiting and waiting for that. I'm still not totally convinced that there, there will be that ultimately in the show. I half suspect still that 
it will be a really bleak ending where there there sort of is nothing to be gained there there is no goodness the most cynical side of me worries that the erwin greatness you know erwin being the answer the light in the dark world was on some level an accident or won't be part of the larger themes of the show but yeah that trilogy 16 17 18 and then this whole like lore exposition reveal with the basement and the the history it feels good it feels good i wouldn't say it's the most amazing or revelatory explanation but it is an explanation finally and it's sufficient to continue or even raise the stakes it does make a lot of things that sort of nag at you for a long time make total sense. My feeling watching these last couple of episodes is I feel somewhat validated because my feelings for a long time were that there's a greater threat, there's more things going on, there are unseen dangers, the enemy is not really the enemy, there's something cyclical going on, and this revealed all that. And that's ultimately a credit to the show that that's all there. It's all there set up from the beginning, I think. Closing a big chapter for myself, like looking way back to when I first watched the show until now, and suspecting that the whole thing was just some giant unsolved, unsolvable mystery box until now seeing that you know there may have been some things i guess that were created after the fact but overall i think it's pretty clear there was there was a unified enough vision of what was going to happen there are just too many details early on that connect to the details we get now the explanations we get now so i think it works really well as a payoff for someone who's been following closely since season one for people who don't <laughs> give up on the show like I did. And it does all that while also creating room for, for more. There's still more to uncover. Like what is the actual threat? What is the actual threat of, of Aaron? I'm pretty sure it's gonna be something like the capability of destroying the world and creating a new cycle since this is definitely an Aaron cycle, right? Am I crazy? I think the only real loose thread for me right now is when will Mikasa finally reveal that she's the female Titan? I've been waiting for that for so long. Overall though, I give this season an A+, two thumbs up, five stars. It pretty much has everything in some moments I'll never forget. I will never forget as long as I live the final Irwin speech and charge. I will never forget Levi slicing up the Beast Titan, one of the most satisfying action scenes I've ever seen in my life because of the, the weight behind it. Armin's sacrifice, the Sophie's choice, and Levi being a true man of principles and, and conscience. The Rod Rice Titan being the most disgusting thing of all time. That's a memorable thing I, I don't want to remember. Mikasa's bed hair. There's just a lot. Too much to name. It feels like the beginning of season three was a lifetime ago, just because of how much has happened. Like, I've been on this journey, like really been on this journey. I've been personally invested in where things go and in the scout's journey and in Erwin, Erwin's fate and all this stuff. So for me, this was peak. This was peak Attack on Titan. But yeah, that's the end of the, the last complete season that's out, which is kind of scary. I, uh, I kind of don't want to go into season four just because it means... I'm inevitably going to have to wait and not have any more Attack on Titan to watch, which is kind of disturbing. So yeah, thank you to all of you for following the show. Thank you for making this season so much fun. Thank you for all the great great insights, comments, humor. As always, as great as it is, as fun as it is, it's, it's really fun because I get to share it with you guys. So thank you for being along for the journey, and I'll see you guys very soon for the start of Season 4. Peace.